Hello, and welcome to Algebra 1 SOL Prep Week 6, Solve Multi-Step Inequalities. For solving an inequality, we can do it the way that we solve equations, where we use our properties and isolate the x, and of course we remember that when dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you flip the inequality symbol. Here are some ways that we can do it with the calculator if we would like to. We're going to go to y equals and type everything to the left side of the inequality sign into y sub 1 equals, and then type everything to the right side of the inequality sign into y sub 2 equals. So all of the stuff from the left side will type into y sub 1, and all of the stuff from the right side will type into y sub 2. Let's go to our calculator and see how to do that. I'm going to press y equals, like the directions say, and I type in everything from the left side into y sub 1, and I type everything from the right side into y sub 2. Then I press graph. The solution is the x value where the lines intersect, but I don't see where they intersect. So remember that sometimes we'll have to zoom out. Zoom out is zoom 3, and I press enter. And now I'll be able to see that they intersect. So we press second trace 5, enter, 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 second trace 5 for intersect, enter, 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 to see where that intersection point is. We only need the x value for our answer. The value will show at the bottom of the screen like it does here. We only want the x value. We ignore the y value. It's the x that we're looking for because it's the x in our inequality. So I'm going to write that x is less than 2. However, x is not equal to 2, so I need to make sure that this symbol is going in the correct direction. I'm going to test a value that should make my statement true. So if I want to think of something I could test that would make this true, what number is less than 2? 1 would work. So let's test if x equals 1, because 1 is less than 2. So I'm going to plug 1 in where I see x in the inequality. 5 times 2 minus 3 times 1 and see if it is less than negative 2 times 3 times 1 plus 4, plugging 1 in where x is. On the left side of the inequality, I get negative 5. On the right side, I get negative 14. So when we think of 5 and 14, it's sometimes confusing with the negatives. If I make a number line and I put arrows, if 0 is here, because I'm only dealing with negatives, negative 5, when I count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comes first. Negative 14 comes way later. So this side of the number line is less. Actually, negative 14 is less than negative 5. So is negative 5 less than negative 14? No, it's not less than negative 14. So that means this symbol is backwards, and I need to change that flip the inequality. So the answer is that x is greater than 2. Inequalities word problems. We must recognize these words and memorize what, the sim what symbol they each represent. So even though this symbol is for less than, there are other words that we use this symbol for. Similarly, the less than or equal to symbol has a lot of other words, the greater than symbol has a lot of other words, and the greater than or equal to symbol has these other words. Remember when we're setting up word problems that the biggest number in the word problem goes at the end of the inequality. Number two, write an inequality to represent the following. Three times a number plus four is no more than 22. So 3, we know that, times is represented by multiply. A number, well, it could be anything, so we put a variable, plus 4. And then the inequality symbol is no more than. No more than is less than or equal to. And then the number 22. And then we put all of that together 
3x plus 4 is less than or equal to 22. So see, it's important to be able to translate our words into symbols. We have to know all of these words. Number three, if Paul already has $12 and can earn $7 per hour, which inequality represents how many hours he must work to earn at least $50. So first of all, I notice that I'm looking for how many hours. That means X represents the number of hours. Therefore, when I see the word hours, I want to think of it as X. When I see the word per, I'm usually multiplying by something. So I want to be looking for the inequalities that have 7 multiplied to x, like this one or this one, but not these two. Another thing to notice is at least $50. I'm looking for at least, and at least is greater than or equal to. So I need greater than or equal to $50. I only see greater than or equal to here. I do see it here, but we've already eliminated that one. So that means the correct choice is C. Other words that we can help <coughs> to clue us in, the word and usually symbol is a symbol for plus. And I see that plus right there next to the 12. 12 and, so that means 12 plus. Graphing inequalities in two variables, it's helpful to know how to graph a line by getting the y by itself and thinking of y equals mx plus b. If we can get it into the form of y equals mx plus b, and we remember that y is greater than means shade up, y is less than means shade down, and these two are with dashed lines, like these examples. When it's greater than or equal to, we shade up, but it's a solid line, Less than or equal to, we shade down, and it's a solid line. So the equal to's get the solid lines. Remember, again, when dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative, you flip the inequality symbol. Now there's another way to do this if we'd like to use the app to graph the inequality. We still have to rewrite the equation into y equals mx plus b form. And again, we remember when dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative, we flip the inequality symbol. However, <coughs> we can follow the rest of the directions to know where the shading and what kind of line it's going to look like. So let's go to our calculator, and we're going to press apps, three, enter. It'll take us to the y equals screen. We're going to follow the rest of these instructions, but we're going to do it for a specific problem. Example number four. So again, we'll go to our calculator, and I'm going to press apps, three. See the screenshot here? Enter, and it takes me to the y equals screen. Now, I have things in there from earlier, so I'm going to clear them. Going back up here, the next step is to arrow over so that I'm highlighting to the left of the equal sign. I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to scroll down where it says y equals, because I don't want it to say equals. I want it to say less than or equal to. So here I arrow until it says less than or equal to. That's only less than, but that's less than or equal to. Then I'm going to arrow down to OK and press Enter. Now I'm going to go back over, and I'm going to type everything that follows the less than or equal to symbol. Negative. Alpha y equals enter gives me my fraction, one third. Arrow out of my fraction, x plus two. Now let's press graph and we'll see what it looks like. But remember I zoomed out earlier, so I'm gonna zoom standard six. Zoom six is always the place to start. And there's what my graph looks like. So comparing it to each of these, I see that the shading is down here and the line is sloping down. The only one that matches that choice is choice A. Thanks, calculator. Let's take a look at one more example. Number five, Mia can spend at most 
$90 in seed packs, $1.50 each, and planting soil, $15 per bag for her garden. Which graph represents how many seed packs and soil bags she can buy? First of all, I noticed this clue word, at most. Remember our list of words that we need to memorize? At most is the less than or equal to symbol. So back to my problem, I'm going to remind myself that I need less than or equal to 90. So just using the less than or equal to, I really don't have to read anything else in the problem. I know that less than means to shade down, and the equal part of the symbol means solid line. So I'm looking for a graph that is shaded down. This one is up. This one is up, but these two are down. Then I'm looking for the one that is a solid line, and that's only this one. So I know that choice A is the correct one. Hope you had fun. Enjoy the practice.